Welcome everyone. Today we have a Dota Underlog Guide. This is a Savage build guide and this has been one of the strongest build in ranking up in the current meta. I have been testing this build since the latest patch on the 24th of July and a lot of cut went from 200 plus ranking to well, top 16 with this build. So to start the build, the, cons the core concept is that there are three savages at tier 1 and two warlocks with Venomancer can easily be one of the dominating force of healing and sustain. Tooth and Claw can be found starting at tier 1 with the item loose, and even a 1 star Tooth and Claw with 7 seconds of the infinite stacking bleeding can really dominate the early game with 2 or more savages and we can snowball with saving, rolling for 3 stars, or you know, building up a strong lineup and aggressively leveling to defeat players quicker. We have two options in this build. We'll refer them back to option 1 and option 2. The number one option is to roll for 3 star units while we are while we are level 7 and level 8. We're looking for 3 star Venomancer, Druids, or even Lycan, or even tier 4 units as well. So the idea is that while we're ahead with our units, we start rolling and this power boosts up into the late game with those 3 star units. The second option is to save up and go aggressive stra spending strategy. This works well in securing top 4 positioning, which will be very crucial in the upcoming ranking changes. You will punish greedy players who are rolling for 3 stars if they can't find the 3 stars and also will finish the game so much more faster because before round 21, by round 21 we're level 9, by round 26 we're level 10 and we go further. We can pick vicious intent, we can pick units and synergies that balance as well and we try to finish the game before round 35. Let's look at the early game. The early game goes from round 1 to 13. Here we'll be focusing on the savages which can be 2, 4. It's likely we won't find 6 savages but it can happen. We can have the warlocks, druids, hunters, warriors and hunters are the starting alliance we can look into. The key here is to have a bit of the units combination which can be great with two savages and warlocks or maybe with druids. The healing power of those are very strong especially before round 10 and we often see teams run the shadow thing with a venomancer or a team runs any build with warlocks can be strong. The savages really excel with heartless as well because in minus armor which amplifies the physical damage we deal with the buffs of savages. Now we still want to build 3 warriors if possible because they are the solid frontliners. By building 3 warriors we can build other lines from above as well. When we look into leveling up we have two options. With option 1 we want to stay on lower levels because most of the 1 star tier 1 units like Venomancer, Enchantress and Tusk is offered at higher rates as the lower level we are. So as we increase in leveling, we actually reduce the rates of finding those units. We want to level up to 6 after round 10 if it is going to add towards our line synergy. For example, we can find a Warlock synergy, we can find a Heartless, maybe a Warrior synergy, and this is when it's super effective. We still want to add them to have HP protection because more synergy, aligns, and maybe 2 stars will help us to lose at less HP. It will be very crucial to be after round 10 to be losing less HP. On strategy 2 where we go aggressive spending, we use the same consideration as above but we favor on saving up. We want to maximize as much as possible having multiples of 10 gold at the start of the round. So we can be selling no core units that's not a savage in order to save up because we plan to start leveling at round 16 and 17 to level 7 and level 8. The key units for the early game are Venomancer plus another Warlock or Savage. Two start Enchantress or maybe two start Druids together. We can have Tusk, like liking a Shadow Thing at one star to complete an alliance with choose the Warlocks or the Savages. Two star units for transitional purpose can be Tiny, Mr. Warlock with Ogre, or maybe just with two star Warlock with the Venomancer. Wish Doctor as a Warlock, Jaw Ranger with Heartless, Queen of Pain just as an assassin, Timbers off the tank, Furion for the Druids and Beastmaster just for a bit of AoE damage. But ideally we don't need 2 star Beastmaster because he sells for less. Keep that in mind, 2 star Beastmaster, Queen of Pain and Timbers will sell for 2 gold less over here. Which Doctor can be used for late game, while the Tiny and Warlock sells for the same price because they're tier 1 units. 
For the round 1 to 4, I tend to prioritize on Venomancer and Enchantress of all because the Druids can be a power spike while Venom is a Savage and a Warlock. Then we follow by Tusk and Tiny, both of the front lines, and they fit into the Warriors. With Shokta and Furion opens up the Warlock and Druids with the above two units, and everything that was listed above over here can be added as we find them. After round 4, we want to collect key pairs for the above alliance, and depending which alliance finds the 2 star first, we build into that alliance. We do want to position into the corner, so most of the time we don't do much AoE damage because we're a more physical lineup with savages. Having 2 star venom, we want to protect it as much as we can. Let's look at the items we can pick from. This can be the Embarrassment, Gloss of Hist, Summoning Stone, Fourth on Grace, Blink Dagger, Octane Essence, Smuggler, and Brush of Aggressor. Those three above items are explained in the Hunter's Guide, so if you guys haven't seen it, definitely check it out. For the Gloss of Hist, because Venom is a range unit, and also increased attack speed, increases mana gain, with Savage buffs, means more damage that is buffed that's dished out to the enemy. Summoning Storm is one of the best items for this zoo build, because of the Savage and Zoo that we summon the Venomancer, with Venomancer, Lycan, and Furion, and also Lomdred after. The brooch can be used on Venomancer or one of the Druids. For more Druid summoning with Furion, quicker healing with Enchantress, or maybe you can use on a mage unit later in the game. So this can be quite useful, like Disruptor. For the Lion's item, we're looking for the Tooth and Claw, completing the cycle, so sucking siphon, and unstoppable. This is one of the most OP and broken item which is Tooth and Claw because of the amount of bleeding in stacks and how much savages are available for us in the early game. And Lycan Wolves and Venomance also stacks those damage. So if you take 7 damage each time you attack, you do 7, seven additional damage. For any friends who has played Dota 2 with Ursa Warrior, this is pretty much Ursa Warrior's passive for all the savages. That's why it's so strong. Complete the cycle. This item is great at 2 star plus, and I might try 4 druids because of this item. For other cases, I might just use it for early healing and transition out of druids. Most of the time, I'll go with 2 druids with long druid and enchantress. And because of that, I don't need the Furion and the Trient. Because they're still elves, or they're still elusives, and they don't contribute much to the late game. With the soul sucking siphon. The Warlock should be placed in the middle. This can be wonderfully strong if we find a 2 or 3 star cordon and assault with a Wish Shocker. Not only he's a Warlock, he's a Troll Cheer Leader that gives the entire team great attack speed, so Wish Shocker can definitely work in the late game. We can also have the Unstoppable for 3 Warriors, and our tanks get tankier, more summons and more units are produced. We win a sustained fight, we lose a burst fight against mages. The advantage of this build is that it is great strength in the early game and the range of our lines and combos are cheap to be found at 2 or 3 units and this gives us a victory in the early game which can snowball further. The disadvantage is that if we don't find enough 2 stars or you know our druids we can fall off late game because without the tooth and claw or without 3 star units we don't have the best early game as an early game strategy build we will fall off in the late game as well. But ideally, we should be able to find enough savages, but if we don't, we have the hunter guide as a backup. Later on, we have the you know old mage and warlock guide, which will be transitioning into the scrappy guide as well. Below are some of the choices. We had more choices here for the early game, so three choices of variation at level five and three variation at level six. In this first variation, we have the 4 Savages and 2 Druids. The highlight here is the Lycans to protect against Assassins. We're in a corner, if anyone jumps first, we can focus on down that unit. The Tusk is the main tank, while Venomancer is the key to be protected. We're looking for those 3 items, and the priority will be Tooth and Claw and Summoning Storm. In the second variation, we have 2 Savages, 2 Warlock, and 2 Blood Bond. This is the case when we find 2 star Ogre and 2 star Warlock. One of them can do, while well, both of them can be quite good before round 10. The Bloodbound Savage Warlock are very good in terms of sustain because of the heal, because of the attack speed from Ogre, and also the Warlock and Ogre can be sold for full price because they're tier 1 units. 
So this is definitely something we transition further into the game, maybe with warriors and maybe with more warlocks. We can sell the ogre and oh, Mr. Warlock after. On this variation, we're looking at three warriors, savages and warlocks. This is a traditional, traditional startup before we hit level 9 or even go further. The warriors are great tanks. The warlock or freak doctor can be replaced by something else. Maybe a shadow thing, maybe a Mr. Warlock, but ideally you want higher warlock. The warriors can also be replaced with Jack, Juggernaut and Axe, or maybe Tusk with something else. But we do want the savages, but they're not necessary because they only have 10% attack damage boost. It is nicer to have it with Tooth and Claw over here because each savage will do more damage. We're looking at 6 units now. This is after level 9. Here we have the warriors to tank, the warlock versus thing, savages and heartless for more damage. The draw ranger is in the center to buff us with attack speed, and venomous is again protected. Tusk protect us against the assassins, and this is one of the most effective lineup. We can remove the draw ranger for something else and remove the patch for something else if we don't have the heartless. Over here, we can even curve into hunters without a lot of the savage units found. Here we keeping the patch with draw, patch is the main tank. The hunters comes from the draw ranger, beastmaster and lycan. And plus with Vano, having the savage and hunters and heartless allowed lycan to be one of the strongest damage dealer, especially at 2 star. His wolves will do double attack and with any form of global item he can dish out so much damage. His wolves also works with the hunters focus as well. But if that's the case, if we go deeper into the hunters, we can go into 2 savages and 6 hunters later in game. On this variation, we have 4 savages, 2 warlocks, 2 druids and 1 demon. This is one of the ideal runs. This is one of the ideal formations we can have in early game after level 9. Having this formation give us so much sustain from the druids and the warlocks, enough damage with the savages with 4 of them and also shadowing with AoE and single target damage. So this is one of my ideal comp, especially with Enchantress and Firin, 1 or 2 at 2 star. If both are 1 star, those two can be replaced with warriors. Let's look at the mid game. Mid game starts at round 14 or 13 even for me, and goes up to round 21 to 25 for me. So for those that haven't seen the savings and spending tips in the Hunter's Guide, definitely have a quick look on it, because this is the major focus which explains for option 2, which is the save aggressively and spend aggressively. We'll be focusing on option 2, which is the spending to roll for mass 3 stars at level 7 and level 8. Likely we'll reach level 7 by round 17. We want to spend the gold above 50. Unless HP is below about 40 or 45%, we, and we are not close to any of the 3 stars, then we can consider the option 1. Because at that, that time, if you're not close to 3 stars and you're too low on HP, if you start rolling and you miss, you lose the game. But if you're aggressive level, then you start rolling, you have a small chance of coming back with a top tier 4 and tier 5 pickup. It can be a Disruptor 2 star, Necromancer, Lich, Gyrocopter, or even Medusa and the Trolls. I'll be attaching a replay of this particular formation and this kind of comeback with us in the end of this guide as well. We'll be rolling for no more than 3 star units at a time. This is the reason because we're limited to 8 bench space and there's only 25 seconds in the preparation per round. We might need more space for higher tier units to 2 star. We might have 1 star laundry needing to be finding a 2 star. We might have Lycan that's not yet 2 star. We might have units we're looking for like Sand King as well. So looking for more than 3, three stars can work at times but other times it clump up the bench and it gets very troublesome. We might be stuck with multiple 2 stars on the bench and this gold is not earning interest. But only looking for 3 or less 3 stars, this can be much beneficial and allow us to have more bench space. We can look for more after finding the initial 3, three stars. We'll be aiming for Venomancer in Tetris as one of the first 3 stars. They are the cheapest and most impactful. Venomancer will summon 3 wards, while Enchantress will buff another druid to 3 star, likely to be the long druid. The decision whether to roll at level 7 versus level 8. 
I tend to roll a level 7. If there's no great allying synergies I can add to the team if I were to level up. I would like to roll a level 8 for the additional synergies, including another stack of Savage, a Scaled, maybe a Heartless. Keep in mind for the Scaled, we really have that unless there's a massive mage already at round 17 to 25. Usually we'd like to have Heartless because it works well with Savage. The Druids can work because they are power spike by getting additional star level. Warriors are great tanks, Warlocks and Hunters can work. So if you look at this, you like hey, it looks like you're likely to be rolling at level 8. Yes, that's most of the case, but cases I roll level 7 is when I'm super close to a 3 star for the 1 cost unit, like Phenomancer and Enchantress. In terms of preference between option 1 versus option 2, we can use some of the indicators for those options. Keep in mind, option 1 is to roll th for 3 star units, option 2 is to be looking to be power leveling. We want to be level 9 and round 21, we want to even go to level 10 and round 26. If we're close to 3 stars, we would go option 1, but we'll still go to level 8 around round 21 or round 26 the latest, and level 9 at round 26 or 31 the latest. This is to ensure that while we're rolling, we're not terribly behind with our lines and combinations, and we're adding 2 star units from the bench onto the field to protect HP and you know to allow us to have a chance of winning while rolling for 3 stars. If I've recruited, likely I go with option 1 because rolling is, you know, 1 gold and you really want to roll for your 3 stars for the druids. Having to then claw all vicious intent, or maybe even both, we like, I like to go with option 2 because more units, more bleeding, and more units, more summoning. And this really capitalizes on the aggressiveness and makes most use of those items. Also give us the best chance of winning before we find the 3 stars. So we have more alliance, more units, and more overwhelming, overwhelming powers before other builds become mature. And that's one of the reasons we can punch other players with aggressive leveling. With 4th on Grace, I tend to have more humans to amplify the physical damage. Crystal Maiden can enhance the damage with, you know, turning her into a heartless, also give us mana to summon. You know, a conquer can be great. Or even sometimes I put down an Oni Knight just for a spot with another Heartless. Not often the case, but it can still work. So we want additional alliance that give us AoE mana again, all the stun. For the key units we'll look at in the mid game, that will be Lycan, Alchemist, Disruptor, Necrofo, Zankin, Kanker, and Tide. Tide is recommended at 2 star and it's effective with scaled units in the late game against mages. But at 1 star, Tide is not that great. He's only there for the scaled, or the warriors. As we level up, we should consider units that add to the team as a whole or give us a massive AoE stun. So Heartless is great because we do most physical damage and you know scaled for mages, also maybe a Sand King just for the AoE stun. We can have 3 or 5 Savages just with Sand King. Sand King at 1 star can still work most of the time. Most of the items we're looking for at this stage of the game will be Vicious Intent for the Zoo Summoning build. The aggression we have is rewarded in the mid-game because we tend to be stronger. The Scythe of Vice is great for the frontliners to disable their stunners. Also, it's great for the backliners to protect the Venomancer and Shadowfin, other squish units in the backline, because the assassins that jumps in will be disabled for at least 4 seconds. Recruiter is great for stages be just before we die, because if we're about to die and with no gold, it's not going to be very helpful. The highlight here is family and friend discount. For this particular item, we'll be going with option 1 and look for multiple 3 stars. While we search for those, it's so much of a discount because we're searching for multiple units to 3 star, and everyone gets 1 gold less. Sometimes Enchantress and Tusk are you know, selling for 0 gold, and that's great. No, they're not selling for zero gold, they, they, no, no, they're selling from the shop for zero gold, <laughs> that's what I mean. The refresher can be used on the laundry for double bear, but, excuse me. But we have tested that the refresher does not work on lichen at two star or three star level, so keep that in mind. Actually, I'm not sure if that test was conclusive, so let me know if you guys have tested more of that. 
So that the match we watched the Lycan at three star did not use the refresher after summoning two of the wars. Maelstrom is great for a range unit, maybe a Venomancer, maybe a Shadowfin. It's a great overall unit. Sorry, it's a great overall item at tier three level. Mechanism is great for healing, so it's the same logic for the pipe because most spells that hits us will be AoE spells. So mechanism and pipe really protects the backline of the squishy Venomans and Shadowfin. Let them survive longer, start the healing, and start the summoning. Battlefury can work on the Lycan and Doom. Doom can be one of our three warriors. While the Lycan, even with hunters or without hunters, can do quite a bit at level 2, but level 3 is when he really shines. The advantage of this before round 15 for option 1 is that our economy should allow us to roll for 3 stars slightly quicker because we're saving more greedily from the hunter guide introduced with how we're saving up and we also want to you know be a quicker to avoid the other player's power spike after round 26. The option 2, our aggression is going to create a small or even great HP difference between us and other players. Most of the players tend to spend after around 21 into 26 and when they start to lose HP down to 40% they start to spend. But for us we spent so much earlier that by the time they're down to 30 or 20% we're still at 50 or 70%. Then when the players go all in they tend to find each other and take each other out and will benefit from having the HP as buffer. The disadvantage is that the less income as we spend our savings after around 15. For option 1, if we're rolling for 3 stars and we miss most of them, and we're still level 7 and 8 and round 25, it's going to be a hard find because we lack the lines, we lack the 3 stars to make it work. For option 2, we usually want only 1 to 2 3 stars maximum on this build, which makes us a little weaker after round 30. So we have a few of the variation for the mid game. And most of the variation are 7 units. For the 8 unit option for option 2, we can go to see the late game vari variations. Because it will jump into the late game quicker, but with only 1 star or 2 star units. We have the 4 Druid, 4 Savage build. This one, the highlight is how much healing we do with Druids and how much Warlock helps. Having a Shadowfin is pretty nice in terms of AoE. If we do not have Shadowfin, Wish Hunter can still work. But the highlight here, of course, is the other units that company synergizes very well here. In the second variation, we can see that we have warriors, savages, and the druids. The druids are not necessarily needed. We can replace them with the heartless, or we can replace them with the hunters. Because two of them go into hunters, or they can go with, you know, a warlock, maybe a jaw ranger. The highlight here is the amount of survivability with warriors, with the healing of the druids. If we do not have the druids, we can go with the warriors as well. This is a very solid mid game build because the warriors can be replaced from lower tier warriors into higher tier warriors, and they can be upgraded to two stars. Here we have the four savages with the druids, warlocks, and heartless. This is something I mentioned earlier, which we can be more flexible. The highlight here is if we do not have the Necromancer, we don't need the Pudge. We can swap them for something else. We can even go with four Druids, or we can go with you know a Disruptor, or maybe a Shadow thing over here. So the flexibility with the Savage is great, because without Tooth and Claw, we can still build into the Druids and the Warlocks, and maybe transition into the Mages. And of course, the title here, if we don't find idea units, Zen King can be the great stunner at the front. But having Zen King in the front, there's a chance to hit him if there's a frontliner he's hitting, or he can go to the back and disable one of the crucial DPS units. And also he will come back with a stun after. Lastly, we have one of the more, more unique builds. This one has four Warlocks and two Savages and the Heartless. The Heartless was a bonus, finding the patch, there's no need to force the Heartless. The highlight here is the 2 star Tiny, which is an AoE stunner and damage dealer. And with the Warlock healing, he can sustain himself quite nicely. The Disruptor, Necro and Shadowfin are AoE damage dealers. So it's likely we can nuke enemies down with a 2 star Shadowfin, or we can do enough healing and survive long enough. 
For the late game, it can start at round 21 or round 25 first, simply because the variation of builds. For the option 1, it starts on 25 because we're still rolling for 3 stars. For option 2, it starts on 21 because we're already level 9 at 21. We want to maintain aggression with both builds. The leveling up or rolling for 3 stars down to 30 or 20 gold is our aggression. The focus here is to balance spending and saving. If we're rolling and there are 2 or 3 more upgrades we can find, and that will enhance the team in terms of you know turning them into 2 or 3 stars, or add an alliance combo, we'll still roll for them. But as we roll and we become relatively stronger, oh we are finding those we're having most units to Oh, if we're having most units to two star, oh, there's a max out alliance choices. We can't really find anything at this stage, knowing that we have to find multiples of the same unit. We then can consider to be saving up again on the particular rounds on round 24 and 29. This is because they're right before the neutral round, which will give us double interest compound gold. The 30 gold we don't spend here will turn into 40 or close to. 40 and then it goes to 40 to 50 by the time it's round 26 or 31. At times we might still have high HP, but keep in mind it's possible that other players are very low on HP. So at times it's not just about us, it's about how desperate other players get. If they go all in and we want to match their power spike, which will in turn minimize our loss and allow those all in players to take out each other, or you know to take them out before they build matures. We do have a special highlight with the PvE quick guide for round 20 and round 30. For round 20, we're facing Tomato and Potato, one red, one yellow Ursa Warrior. The first one, the red one on the right, the red one on the left hand side have 10 armor and 75 magic resistance. The left hand one, the yellow one, has 25 armor and zero magic defense. We want to kill both at the same time if possible. Having one to two stuns like Tiny and Workshop that really helps here because the coconut bounce and the toss is massive. Now the key is to position our physical lineup on the right hand side because this will allow us to focus on the yellow one first. The red one is so much easier to be killed with no armor. So after the death of the yellow one in usually first, the red one can follow after. If we accidentally kill the red one first, the yellow one becomes super aggressive and just mows down the whole entire team. So positioning is key and having a few stuns. Against round 30 lizards with the massive healing, there is no you know, guaranteed win victory with our particular lineup because it depends on how many stuns we have. We want to place a stunner in the back line a little bit so they don't jump in at the start of the battle. So this is will take a few seconds before they cast the lifesteal of Warlock Link and we want to wait for after they cast a lifesteal or during the casting of the lifesteal we want to stun them after. So if we stun them too early, they come out of stuns, then they start healing, then all the damage is wasted. So we want to delay the stun a bit. We want to aim to have one to two follow up stun, like units like Conquer and with Boats or maybe units like Wish Shocker that will gain mana and follow up with the stun. 50% of the time we will lose the Lizards because of the Lizards damage and of this healing. This can work when we have the bleeding strategy with Tooth and Claw, but this might also fail because we lack the stun. With most late game, we want to reposition after each loss. Here for our summoner nerves build, we want to keep in mind we won't have room for the summoners. We want to make sure the Venomance is surrounded and protected at the same time he can summon enough units. We want to split up unless we have key items like pipe or the troll golden assault. At times it's better to split up because there's AoE spells that catches us or there's like one massive stun like conquer boat. Other times going to the corner and keep summoning would stop the enemy from catching the summoning units like Venomous and Firin and give us more chances to keep summoning. The mirror adjust is when we lose to the enemy we adjust to the opposite side from left to right or right to left. We do want to units to bait away the patch hook, especially for the three star venom, so he shouldn't be in the far most corner for the patch to be hooking him. We want at least two to three initiators in the late game, because no matter how much damage we deal with heartless and savages, if we can't stun enemy, 
they can still counter us with a stun or maybe disrupt more damage than us. Two star Titan Hunter, Disruptor, Conquer, great. Sand King and Tiny can also work nicely as well. It depends how we adjust, but Sand King is one of the best at one star for sure. The other disruptor, the, the other disablers, but not the strongest for us, are Dusa and Lich, which can slow. So is the Gyrocopter. The Doom is okay, and Zen King is mentioned twice because I forgot I left him in here. In terms of item choices, the Savage build does a lot of physical damage, but we lack AoE damage. So we can select an item that helps us to boost our damage, or we can, you know, select items that helps with the summons. So Mechanism Pipe will also protect the summons against the magical or heals them. The Dagon will give us more burst damage. And other th times, we want the team fight or AoE buff or debuff items. Because we have a massive army of summons, the buff will be so much more effective and so is the debuff like armor minus items. The current matter with the Savage is very... Actually, how should I say it? The carry matter with the Savage allows us to have the early accessibility and transitional potential with Savage, which there are three Savages and we can sell them at full cost. Because of that, we can go into a different build after using Savage as the cornerstone of the build. We can look into semi transition, semi transition as, as well. So on the second case, we don't have to sell all the Savages. We can go into Warlock, Mage and Savage and Heartless we can go into Savage and Hunters, Savage and Warriors. Notice that the Savage build without Tutan Claw or multiple 3 star units in the late game will be weaker. This is simply because it is early game build, it is getting more popularity because of the ability, but if you don't have that as the cornerstone, you will be much weaker after round 30. We do have a number of variations for the late game, most of those builds are level 8 and level 9 builds. As a start, we have the three Warlock, Warrior, and a bunch of Alliance transition. So this is what happens when we don't find the Tooth and Claw, so we don't focus fully on the Savages. We can use whatever still works in most of the games, which are the stuns, the healings, the silence, and the summonings. The damage dealer will come from Shadow Thing, Venomancer, the stuns at the front lines. Also Necro can heal and do damage. Lycan is here because he is also a savage, but he can replace by something else. If we had the tiny humans into Heartless with the fourth on Grace, it can also work here. Now, what happens when we find Tooth and Claw? We can go with six savages and the Druids with the Druid item as well. If we do not have the Druid item, we can replace Trim Protector and Natural Prophet into different stunners like Conquer, Tiny, Tide, or even a two-star, one-star Medusa can work as well. The key here is how much healing we're doing with the Druids and with the Warlock. So when the Warlock is not healing, the Druids are healing. When the Druids are dead, they're still healing. Here is a variation I discussed earlier with only two of the Druids. We have Tide Hunter and Conquer as the stunner. Tusk still protects us from the any blinkers or assassins, and so is Lycan. Notice here we're grouping those units which are summoning. So we have enough spot as the Lycan and Tusk runs forward, and the Enchantress will be able to heal those two, which will be more crucial for us. Here is one of the level 9 builds we can look into. We have 6 Savages here, we're going for more Heartless. This build works well with 4th on Grace because the Lycan will be turned into a Heartless as well. Having this many Heartless and the Savage, we do shred the enemy down pretty quickly. And if we're having trouble to find our three stars, say the Tusk, Enchantress, or the Venom, we can go for the two-star Lich, who will boost up our magic damage, and a great disable with the slow as well. The Pudge is here to bait Assassin's enemy units, also to hook enemy away from the backline or the frontline. In this one, we do have a Coordinate Assault with the Trolls. Having the Trolls and the Warlocks give us superb healing. Here we have sacrificed two of the savages for two of the trolls. The troll warlock can be placed in the back if we want him to do damage, he's in the front as a warrior to tank up first. Witch Doctor and the troll give us the troll buff, and plus the coordinate assault we have so we are pretty much bloodlisted savages. We attack quicker, we do more damage, and we also lifesteal. On top of that, if we have Tooth and Claw, 
oh, so so sucking siphon, who are actually benefiting with healing and with bleeding damage. Now notice the above samples of variations. Uh, some of the possible savage builds. There's so many more combinations and lineups available, and that's one of the best things with this build. The key is to be more dynamic with the choices, as the game offers us different units and items, which can be the global or the alliance items. We'll be looking into more builds in the future, which will be the scrappy warlock mage build and also the tier list for the units. I'll also be attaching some of the builds which were played with this particular guide and some of the highlights, for example the game 1 which we have how much Tooth and Claw even one star does and game 2 how much aggression can help us in the later stage of the game. To summarize, this build is very effective because Savage is an early game build. This does take away some of the RNG which we tend to not find crucial units like our 2 star knights or maybe our hunters in the late game. Having 3 Savage at tier 1 is crucial. Finding the bleeding of Tooth and Claw is massive for us, but if we do not, we can build into Warlocks, Mages, and other builds as well. Having multiple options in this build allows the friends who love 3 stars to go for 3 stars. We can also stick with our aggression to be aiming for top 4 in the ranking matter, so give us more versatility. Hopefully you guys like this guide, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe for future guides, builds, and tier lists to come with Dota on the Lord. Please also follow and subscribe to support me on Twitch. Thank you, thank you so much everyone for your support so far. Now let's